let's get into building flows now. So I'm going to start with the first example, and then Eric's going to do a second example after I'm done. My example is going to be probably the most common flow that we see out there, and that's going to be an automated email notification. So something's going to happen, and we're going to send an email out. Um, our business scenario for this example is going to be this. So we have Dynamics 365 customer engagement sales, and we have a sales process. That sales process uses leads. Um, and in our environment here, our leads are nurtured by our marketing department, and our marketing department will own those leads. But then after a period of time, after we get some engagement from those leads, our marketing department then wants to then pass that lead off to sales. So they'll assign that lead to a sales rep, and then that is what's going to trigger our Power Automate or our flow to then send an email not notification to that sales rep that we assign the lead to. So that sales rep is aware that they have a new lead assigned to them. And then we'll include a little link in that email that they can click on to actually take them right to that lead record in Dynamics. So this is Dynamics here, um, and this is a lead record. And if you look in the upper right hand corner, that is the owner of the lead record. So as our marketing team is working, the nurturing this lead, the owner of the lead was our marketing team. And then somebody in our marketing department at the appropriate time when they're ready to pass this off to sales is they're going to change that owner to one of our sales reps. Here you see it is me. So I'm going to wear my sales rep hat for a little bit here. And then somebody on our marketing team is then going to mark this lead and they're doing it through this business process flow, which is another type of flow, this little ribbon that you see up on the top. But we have a step in that business process flow to say, is it sales ready? Yes or no. And so the marketing person will toggle this lead record to, yes, it is sales ready. That is what's going to trigger our flow to run. So let's get started. So we got to build our flow around that process. And so we build flows in what's called a maker portal. <clears throat> and there's two flavors of that. So I have the two URLs up here, really simple. Make.powerautomate.com is the one that Eric and I will be using. But you can also build flows in what um, in make.powerapps.com. And you can also do other kind of customizations like build a power app in that second one. But if we're specifically talking about just building a flow, um, we prefer using make.powerautomate.com. Once we go in there, we'll select the environment to build this flow in. We'll put that. Um, We'll create a solution file to put our work in, and then we'll create this new automated cloud flow in that solution file. So here I went to make.powerapps, or sorry, make.powerautomate.com, and I selected my environment in the upper right. So since this is going to be running off of our Dynamics customer engagement sales process, the environment that I'm choosing here is the um, Dynamics customer engagement environment. Now, Eric's gonna talk more about some best practices later on today, but um, we wanna probably be building these flows in our sandbox or dev environments, test them all out, and then promote our changes to our upper environment, like a production environment. And we do that promotion through what's called a solution file, which is why we wanna build our cloud flows in a solution file. So I pick my environment, and then on the upper left of that menu, you see I click New Solution, and then I give it a solution name, and then I have a solution file to work in. I will click on that solution file, and then I'm going to click New, Automation, Cloud Flow, and then an automated cloud flow. So remember, we have instant cloud flows, and we have scheduled cloud flows. I want the automated one because I want it to run when the marketing user flips that lead to sales ready, yes. Once I do that, I will get kind of a dialog box to get me started. And all I need to do here is simply give it a flow name, which I call this one lead, send owner notification when sales ready. And then I um, have to pick a trigger. So a trigger is related to those connections. Remember Dataverse is where the, Dynamics customer engagement is built on. So it's a very good idea to try and filter your triggers by some keyword. So I typed in the word dataverse here and it came up with some suggestions. 
And the one that I want is the second one down that says when a row is added, modified, or deleted in the dataverse. So again, a lead record is a record in the a row in the dataverse. And so when that gets modified, I want it to trigger my flow. But let's jump in. So once I hit create here, um, that's going to create my trigger. So at that point, I would just have that very top box that you see in this print screen right here. Um, that's our trigger. Now this is our completed flow. So I'm giving you a little preview here, but we've got three steps in our flow, one trigger and two actions. And I'm gonna jump into each one of these in some detail right now. So the first one um, is um, the trigger. So the trigger can run when a record is added or modified or deleted. I change that as you can see here to just be when it's modified. So I don't wanna run when a lead is created, that leads needs to exist, and somebody's later going to modify that one field to sales ready yes. And so to do that, on the bottom of this little area, I where it says select columns, I had to put the the schema name of that field, that yes no field, sales ready yes no, as the column to be looking for as to be modified. So by me putting that SSI underscore sales ready in there, that's the name of the field. Um, this flow will only run if the lead record is modified and that specific field is modified. If I don't put a select column in here, this flow would run anytime a lead was modified, no matter what was modified. So for this example, I want to be very specific that it's only when that field is modified. And furthermore, I only want it to run if that field is set to true. So I put a little expression in the filter rows that says that field name, sales ready, has to equal true or yes, then I want the flow to trigger and run. If somebody marks it as a no, it, the flow is not going to run. It's not going to trigger. So there's my trigger. The next step is I hit um, the plus sign there and I build the, my first action. So action one. Well, the very first thing I need to do is I need to go retrieve some information from that new owner. So marketing is going to change the owner to the sales rep. I need to go get the email address from that sales route. And I need to get it from their user record. So there's a step called get a row by ID in the dataverse. So that's what I selected. And then I pick the table to go get it from. It's the user table. And then it needs to know, well, what row in the user table or what record in the user table are you going to get? And I do that with what's called a dynamic content. So you see that little green shaded box there that that arrow's pointing to. If you click in there, um, in that row ID field, it'll come up and say, do you want to put some dynamic content in here? And I said, yes. And then this little box shows up and I just typed in owner because I'm looking for the owner of the lead. And you can see it come up and said, all right, I found an owner as dynamic content from that step above the trigger above when a row gets added, modified or deleted. And are you looking for that owner ID, and that's exactly what I want. I want to find the user record by that owner ID. So that is step or action one. And then I hit the plus sign to build action two, which is our last action, and that is going to be the, the mechanism to send the email. So we send an email, um, and uh, the step that I chose was send an email version two, and uh, then I just start building out who the email is going to go to. And um, that is dynamic content for the email address of what I found in that previous action. And then in the subject, I have new lead, and then I put the first name and the last name of the lead record. And I'm getting that as dynamic content, just like we did before. And then I build the body of my email. So you notice in the body of the email, um, we have the URL of the lead record itself followed by this little bit of dynamic content here. So the URL, when you're in Dynamics customer engagement, the, the URL to the record is static. Like the URL to the lead record is static. But what's different is the very last piece of it is then the unique identifier of that lead record. And that, so that's why I plugged in that dynamic content. Now, how did I get the static URL? Well, I just went into Dynamics, went in my sales app where the sales reps would be, and I went and opened up a lead record, and in the URL on the top of the browser, I just copied that whole thing and pasted it. And then I took out the last little bit of the unique identifier and then inserted that dynamic content. 
So we'll always use the unit, the unique identifier for the lead record that triggered the flow. Then we're going to want to test our flow. So there's a test flow button in here as you're building them. So I click test here and then I just choose manual. And then I go into my uh, test lead record and I toggle it to sales ready. Yes. And look at the results of my test. And so I ran that and my flow was successful. If it wasn't successful, it would tell me it wasn't and would come back with some information of why it failed. And then I would just have to troubleshoot that. So this is the result of my flow. Um, so an email got sent to me since I was the sales rep. And you see then the body of the email. And there you see that, that URL link there, that hyperlink that I can click on to take me right to that lead record. And if you look on the very end of that URL, there you see that dynamic content got inserted right after it says lead and ID equals. And then we have that GUID or unique identifier that we were passing in from that dynamic content. 